So next up we have Jan Erotic, Live View Studio. This is um, AR tourism, um, more specifically uh, culture and the arts. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jana Rodic, and today I'm going to talk about the project using augmented reality for promotion of cultural-based tourism. Uh, first, I would like to say a few words about the studio. Uh, Live Studio is a cross-media creative agency based in Belgrade, Serbia. We create interactive experiences using new upcoming technologies, things we like to think most people haven't seen before. However, we are not a technology firm. We use technology uh, as a tool to create solutions that engage and move people. And this is just an overview of different projects we've done in the last couple of years. Uh, as I said today, I would like to talk about Tech Tour project. Sorry. Here we go. Um, it's a, actually, Tech Tour project is a cross-media platform using augmented reality in promotion of cultural heritage. It is a pilot project financed by the European Commission through its enterprise and industry program within the call supporting innovation in cultural tourism, especially in promotion of cultural routes and international and aiding international cooperation. Uh, just a few words about the background and cultural roots uh, initiatives within the EU. Cultural Roots uh, is a European initiative to draw more tourists through promotion of thematic itineraries. These itineraries connect places in several countries with a common historical or geographical theme. In that way, they are promoting the idea of common European identity and also aid to visibility of less, of less known or uh, remote, remote locations. Uh, through this project, in cooperation with fellow partners from four participating countries, the project promotes Roman and Byzantine itineraries going through Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia. These itineraries actually connect archaeological locations from Roman and Byzantine time, places where very little, if anything, is uh, visible today, but places that are historically very significant and with a great tourist potential. So in summary, the aim of the project is to bring together traditional communication and new media solution based on mo like new media mobile solutions uh, using mobile as a platform and augmented reality to provide better, more interesting experience to the, to the tourist. Uh, depending on uh, specific uh, situation and requirements in each of the archaeological locations, we are actually developing interactive augmented reality experiences that uh, provide better experience on, in archaeological sites. So within this partnership I mentioned, uh, we are, uh, our studio was responsible for developing the concept, uh, the visual identity, as well as the whole cross-media platform called Tour, and here you may see the elements of mobile, web, and print together with the main output of the project, which were the interactive info boards. Just a few words about the visual identity in order to reflect the contemporary approach in cultural heritage, as well as to address the requirement of this cross-media application. Uh, we developed, the, we developed the dynamic visual identity uh, logo is actually a contemporary interpretation of the knot symbol and all other elements and colors chosen in this uh, cross-media platform actually represent, as you may see here, either history or technology or Byzantine heritage and Roman heritage. So we are coming to the info boards I just mentioned. These are, there are 12 pilot locations marked with these um, augmented reality info boards. And info boards, basically, or different signage uh, elements is something that is that you usually can find on uh, historical sites. But usually there is like a bunch of text and maybe a guide to some, maybe some audio guide to rent. And what we were trying here is to bring together this traditional communication at historical locations with augmented reality and new media in order to enable better experience at um, at, a, at a site. So. This is a, these are three examples of uh, info boards. Uh, they are uh, 
sorry, the, these locations are marked with these boards, but the boards also offer augmented reality content. Their design is actually inspired by map pins, and they, in addition, as I said, to some basic information about the history and the importance of the site, there is also an aug augmented reality overlay, which can be experienced with the Tech Tour augmented reality application. This is a small overview of the application. It is developed for both iOS and Android, and also, in addition to this standalone application, there is also a channel within Junio browser and also with, with, uh, within Layer browser, but with limited uh, content. Basically, Tech Culture is a mobile app that offers a range of multimedia information about <coughs> Roman and Byzantine cultural heritage sites. Uh, users may find information on archaeological locations uh, layered over their camera live view. When they click on it, they will access additional information routing to the site or a link to the Tech Tour website with another layer of information. Uh, this live view presentation is kind of important for this project because it puts, for example, important locations that everyone knows, for, such as Roman Colosseum or something like that, in the same framework as some lesser known locations. So usually when you're using uh, geolocation AR, you would have basically the sites that are around you, but within this project, we have the sites that are next to you, but also the, the sites in different country, like very far away, like a few hundred kilometers or even a few thousand kilometers. So. These, the information on these locations are then, as you can see here, available through map, also through list view. Clicking on them takes you to more information. This is just um, basically a screenshot from one of the cities within the project. As you can see, you have the locations in Croatia, in Italy, and also the location of the AR info board. I would like to talk now about uh, actually the content and the way that we are using augmented reality in, um, in communication the, on those sites. Those info boards are not always at the location itself. They are sometimes made, they are sometimes positioned at the location of the high tourist flags, such as airports or train stations. And in other situations, they are on the, they are on the location itself. Uh, I have some like some free examples here that will illustrate different approaches depending on um, the situation and how, and depending on the situation and our understanding how AR would contribute to communicating information. This is the example of Felix Romoliana. It is a location in Serbia. It is actually an imperial palace from the third century and apparently one of the most beautiful imperial palaces in Europe. However, not many people are aware of that. And it is some 300 kilometers from Belgrade in a distant and remote place. And compared to some equally important sites in Italy or Croatia, it has only a small portion of visitors. In this case, the info board is placed in Belgrade in a popular part with, uh, with many tourists, which many tourists visit. And when viewed with a, with a smartphone, it triggers a virtual guide that tells that tells the tourist more about uh, the, the location and also after the guide finishes, it enters the 360 degree panorama of, the, of Felix Romuliana. Uh, this is another situation. This is a, town, this is a location in the town of Rijeka in Croatia. In Croatia. Uh, it's a completely different one because under, the, under the, one of the main town squares, archaeologists have discovered beautiful ancient mosaics but as it, this is a town square that is used every day, the reconstruction of the square to actually show the mosaic underneath, it's almost impossible. And what we are doing here, we have the info board on that square, which when viewed by, through smartphone, triggers a little interactive scenario where you swipe the, swipe the screen in order to uncover the mosaic and also other artifacts found during the excavation campaign. Uh, the third situation is uh, Fondo Cossar in Aquileia in Italy. Well, as in the most archaeological sites for general, for, sorry, for general public and tourists, there is not much that can be visually consumed, and it is the, this is the same. This is the thing with Fondo Cossar on the site uh, where once, like before the first century, there was nation capital of Aquileia. Uh, 
today it's an empty field and archaeologists found out that before there was a very rich house with markets and shops. So when a tourist comes, as I said, there is nothing. There is an empty field and archaeologists, they might appreciate it and historians, but for a for a, for a general public, there, there is nothing there. And through augmented reality, we have a 3D reconstruction of the house that once existed there, and you can click on its door and enter a virtual tour through that house. So in, uh, in addition to the mobile application, there is also a website dedicated to the project that uh, offers information on the locations, around 40 locations presented through this project, but also other initiatives, partnership, and other, other things about the project. But what is interesting is that the landing page that is actually a kind of symbolic representation of using augmented reality. You can move the little phone and over the pins, which represent 12 locations presented with these info boards, and you have more information about each of them. This is just a website with other information on these historical sites. And as I mentioned in the beginning, the idea was to somehow enhance traditional media, media used that for promotion of history and archaeology. And this is, a, this is a just a few slides showing how we, how we are using the brochure also, also developed through this project. When you point your phone at the little pins on the map, in each country, there is one for, for each of the countries involved in the project uh, pop, pops out a 3D model representing either a, a reconstruction or some important archaeological finding. When you click on it, you get extra information information about it. Uh, I would like to say that this is an ongoing project. The first reactions are very positive, particularly because uh, different institutions are coming forward with uh, new ideas how to, how to be involved. One of them uh, is an exhibition where you have all 12 boards from four different countries, but in one place, so you can actually kind of have a virtual tour through, through Europe, but in one place with all the augmented reality layers over these, uh, over these panels. Um, what else they are doing? Because those markers would work either on a on a on a on a signpost or on a, on any other printed material. They are printing postcards, so you kind of have a, a interactive postcards. There are a number of articles published about the project, and in a way, it all brings to the aim of the project, which is involving wider audience, uh, promoting remote locations, and in increasing actually tourist flows. So augmented reality showed is a good way to do all those things. And this would be all for me. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions. Then... Question for Jana over here. Hi. Hi. Did you have any specific challenges in getting the users to download the app to actually interact with the, uh, the AR info boards and whatnot? Yes, that was quite a big challenge for this for this project because on one hand you have to think about the technical issues but as it is a European project with 12 partners that most of them have nothing to do with the technology like chambers of commerce of ministries of culture they have their requirements and on the other side their requirements uh, the technology and the content and the the Wi-Fi connections and the roaming fees and stuff like that. So this first version of the applications is complete. All the content is available offline, so all the content is in, is in the app. Uh, I mean, which makes it uh, easier for considering roaming fees and stuff like that. But this is why there is a, there are channels within Junio and Layer Browser with, let's say, with limited amount of content to be used. Uh, if you have a connection to the internet. When, when you say the, the layer browser, did you utilize uh, the API, or is this a, a front-facing custom? Sorry, I didn't understand. Did you utilize the layer API, so they already have that? And then yes. You, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hi. 
uh, obviously it's, uh, it's involving many different partners and also the tourists. Um, uh, one of the key points will be to identify the you know, user requirements. Okay? So, I mean, from tourist point of view, what they want, how did you find that um, user requirement? In which process have you gone through? Well, uh, when, European pr when, when doing European project, as there are many partners involved, we have like a number of meetings during the project. And then again, uh, it all depends on the, on, the, on the specific location. You talk to the people in the museum, you, you understand what, what they have from, con like, for example, uh, the 3D reconstruction, it takes a number of years to understand how the structure looked like, and it takes uh, a lot of time to actually make the 3D reconstruction to be genuine. So for, for some locations, this is possible. For, for other ones, it is not. And it was a kind of combination of these, uh, of these things uh, that gave the final, final solution in each of the, of the sites. It is, it is a kind of a research project to also uh, understand what, what are the possibilities, but also to, to, in a way, educate people in museums and in cultural sectors. What are the possibilities? What content is required? In what formats? Um, and so it's, uh, it's a way for, for everyone to understand the possibilities, not only for the, okay, for the, for the tourists, of course, but also uh, how, how in future to, to approach this, um, this kind of project. And also, on top of that, there's lots of information, archaeological information, but you have to choose, you know, few key information, which you have to select it uh, based on, you know, out of uh, so many different information. So when you, when you select and how to do, can I, can I request just one last question we mm -hmm. get to back here? Do you want to discuss this with Yana after the, after the session? Yeah. I'll leave one of these questions so we can move on. Check, check. Uh, do we have any uh, stati statistic or projection for the number of users or number of download or generally the how, pe how popular it is? Uh, the application is not uh, public yet on, 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 on iTunes. It was, it was just finished, so mo most people use it through testing and through initiatives uh, within the museums where guides already have the iPads or on these exhibitions, so I don't have the, this kind of information yet. Thank you very much. You're welcome.